down to this company and he says swear unto me by God that thou will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master and I will bring thee down to this company because he had the answer that they needed. he said yeah I'll take you now you gotta do this under my conditions just don't let my master kill me and, and, and quite David said don't worry you're gonna be all right and when he had brought him down, behold, there were, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. So these people were partying, enjoying their spoils, but little did they know. Amen. They, David was there to take back what they took from him. See, the enemy, he don't know when we're going to come and get our goods. But because we trust God, God is going to make it happen. Amen. You hear me? Don't give up. Don't give up on your loved ones. Don't give up on your money or whatever. You trust God. That was stole from you, your finances. You believe God to get them back. Yeah. I'm serious about it. Hallelujah. But then we sued DuPont for $10 million and we lost. And you talking about the agony of defeat. Been there. Done that. You know, the day that the verdict came in, we was in court for two whole weeks. And the verdict came in and DuPont had over 27 witnesses on one side of them. They killed the whole one side of them. And boom, when the verdict came in, those folks jumped up and you thought they hit the lottery. They got high fiving each other. I mean, rejoicing that DuPont won. And my wife, she screamed. Oh my God, I'll take that scream to my grave. She screamed. I thought she lost her mind. I want you to hear me. You talking about the agony of defeat? Been there, done that. And I'm telling you, I said, Lord, have mercy. Something's wrong. I said to God right after that, I said, Lord, there's something wrong with this picture. These people rejoicing because they won and my son and my family are in all this pain because of what they did. But you know what? There's a righteous God. You hear me? There's a righteous God. Even though it might have been some years now, but God is still, he still the one said, vengeance is mine and he will be paid. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. I don't know when God's going to do it, but he's going to vindicate us against two You hear me? I believe that. Matter of fact, I told that man, I told the doctor when he had called me and my wife in to counsel us after they found King Shai. He made us feel like it was our fault that our son ended up in the way that they found him. This is how I took him. And he told us, you know, what we had to deal with from that point on. I sat there and my wife was crying like a baby. I said, I listened to what he had to say for about 25 minutes. And finally I had enough to hear. I took my Bible. I want you to hear me. I took my Bible. My wife was sitting here. I'm here. And the doctor was there in front of us. I stood up and I took my Bible and I, I wanted to slap him in the face with it. Here's my hand to God, I ain't lying. I wanted to slap his face, but I didn't. I thank God I didn't. I just shook it in his face. I shook this word in his face and I said, you might know about the brain, but I know the one that created the brain. I said, when my God healed my son, I'm bringing him back here. And I snatched my wife and we left. You hear what I'm saying? I'm believing God. You hear what I'm saying? I'm trusting God. God's going to honor that word. Because God's going to show them, uh -uh. I said, my God created the brain. He made the brain. And I said, when God healed my son, I'm bringing him back. I believe that man's still living. I believe that he's still living. He can't, he can't die until God performs what he should do. But I told you, I believe that. I believe that. Amen. Because Keisha is still living. And it's going on 30 years. He's still living. I'm still living. And I'm still confessing the word. I'm still trusting in my God. And like he said, Dave said, 
pursue. Hey, God is able to perform the impossible. Amen. He can make it happen. And sure enough, amen, God made it happen for David. Amen. So it wasn't no mistake that the things happened that happened to him. Because God got the glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so David killed everything. You know David was a warrior. I mean, when you confronted David, he could kill you in a heartbeat. Can I get a witness? And, and just as fast as he could kill you, take your head off, he had the compassion of Jesus. That's so mind-boggling. See, people didn't want to cross David. When you cross David, he was in trouble. <laughs> but thank God for when his mercy was there. Amen. Thank you. And David killed all that. I mean, look. I mean, he killed everything that was moving. Oh, man. Amen. He, he, he went to get his two wives and all those that the enemy took. Amen. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. You hear that? And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Oh. David recovered. Isn't that what God told him in the beginning when he prayed? Didn't God tell David, pursue and you're going to recover all? What do you need God to do to, today to recover whatever the enemy has taken out of your life? Amen. Come up to the altar, whatever it is that you might need. Amen. Come up and let God have it. Give it to God.